So I've been staying here just recently uh, for a while with some folks I met at a church that I've attended a number of times. And it's a lot easier to think here than it is out in the streets at night. Thought a lot. I, I have been reading Samuel over the past few months. I wanted to get David's story, so I read Samuel, Second Samuel. And thought about family, thought about my own mortality a lot over these past months. A lot of things have happened to me that um, I think that I'm told not to talk about really anymore. In the end here, I've been sober and I've been attending prayer services and attending Catholic Mass sometimes which also helps prayer service on Tuesday morning for a couple weeks and then and Wednesday evening and Wednesday morning at, a, at another church having coffee with a, a, a sexton at an Episcopal church, very old Episcopal church. Um, volunteering in the gardens at, at some churches. I got to go uh, on a men's retreat. But, and it's really sad, and I, so couch surfing at this place, it's a really nice place actually. Um, and it's really sad because these, these people are like my parents' age. Um, a lot of people are like my grandparents' age. And so I have all these people in my life, but I don't have my family in my life. So naturally I'm, I'm thinking like, this is really wrong, you know? And I, I look around me in the uh, 12 baskets. I had a, a ministry this winter. Uh, I would, I would read sometimes I'd read my Bible down there. You know, I, I'd re try to read a book a day, uh, like Ty Lopez his way of reading a book a day, just tapping into that friend uh, once a day. I, I would try to do that at 12 Baskets, the Fishes and Loaves place in West Asheville. And I'd volunteer, I'd show up at 7.30, 8 o'clock and volunteer, sometimes until the end of the day. And um, sometimes I'd leave earlier because I, I get stressed about people. Um, I really enjoyed their pantry days more than the sit down uh, and serve a hot meal day. Uh, but I, I had my social reformation library project. So reading a book a day, um, I was also trying to give books thoughtfully where I could. Uh, I've been doing that for a long time. And meditation cushions. I gave a number of people meditation cushions this winter. And then it was getting down to like eight degrees, uh, 10 degrees. And I was scared that whenever the temperature dropped that first night that it was going to get down to 10, uh, the fellow who was sleeping, we had a, uh, a closed music hall that hadn't, hadn't been open for years and uh, it had a big patio so that it kept you know the rain or the snow off of where we would sleep. And this guy, Aaron, played guitar up and down Haywood Road um, whenever it wasn't too cold, whenever he wasn't freezing his fingers off. And, uh, and he slept on that patio with me pretty much every night for, for a while. And I was concerned that he might not have enough gear. Like, I had a zero-degree sleeping bag. I was pretty sure I was going to be okay. But I was concerned he might not have uh, enough gear. Um, and so Betty from 12 Baskets and I went down to Goodwill before the temperature dropped and uh, Betty wanted to buy it because she has more money than I have and she bought us Aaron and me and she knows Aaron to uh, $15 worth of comforters and they had a manager special at Goodwill uh, in the cold weather and so we had this big stack of comforters uh, and I, had, I was pulling a beach wagon, a little camping wagon uh, from Walmart, uh, and I, I piled it up with all those comforters, uh, and I'd given some blankets away uh, from 
uh, to, to people already. I'd been resourcing blankets. I do that every year. And uh, so I, anyways, I got uh, I, I got back to our patio and saw Aaron that night. And he'd gone and played guitar outside Earth Fair on the other side of town and, uh, and actually resourced himself uh, enough gear for him to get through. So we had all these extra blankets. Um, and because I'd been giving blankets away already uh, to people and they'd leave them laying around uh, and, and so they'd, they'd need blankets again later I'd see them and, and they're, they need blankets and it's like well what happened to the blankets before and they just left them laying somewhere and maybe somebody ran off with maybe they f were found and ran off or maybe they got wet um, so I, I said well you can sleep we have this big patio you can sleep here um, and then just give me the blankets back in the morning and I'll drag the wagon and so I had this wagon and I, and, I, and people knew where I was um, during that time. And I saved three people this winter during the cold weather. The first time this guy, uh, he, uh, he showed up at like two o'clock in the morning and he's, he, was, he was mad. He, he was like, do you guys have my sleeping bag? And I said, no, we're good. We've got, you know, extra blankets. <laughs> uh, he said, well, somebody ran off in my sleeping bag. I fell asleep um, next to my stuff and I woke up and it was gone. And so I said, well, you know, here, as long as I can get him back in the morning. And so he, he curled up under some comforters beside me. And he told me in the morning that I saved his life. And then another night this guy, it's like, it, it was eight degrees. This was the coldest night in Asheville uh, this winter. It was eight degrees out and I hear Aaron yelling at me and it's bringing me out of my sleep. And he, he says, Drew, this guy's freezing to death over here. Do you have any blankets? And so I'm like, yeah, well, here's two. And then I, I realized um, as this guy was trying to cover up and he, he walks over and he can't move his fingers uh, in his arms barely, uh, and he's wearing flip flops. It's eight degrees out, and he's he and he he's like, like I started freezing to death. That's what he said, and so he laid on top of my blankets so the the concrete wouldn't be so cold, and then um, he couldn't cover himself up because he was just not moving very well, and so I like tucked him in, and I realized I'd rather give all my blankets and just and just be alert and and get through this night then give a couple blankets and if I don't know what he's going through and, and wake up and there's a dead person beside me and so uh, I gave him the rest of my blankets and I unzipped my sleeping bag and I just laid there and I thought and I didn't find any truth in it except for he started um, you know at the time and, and he started snoring after a while and, and that made me really happy because I realized it's working he's like thawing out and then uh in the morning I said good morning bro and he uh he pops his like dreadlock head out and he's got a smile from ear to ear and and that really made me happy um and then the third one was this guy who was in a wheelchair and I know that what happens is the uh the the rain comes through and then that's when the temperature drops and that's when you that's when you get really in danger is because you get soaking wet and then the temperature drops um and so that was happening and this guy was in a wheelchair and he said i left my stuff of course he's in a wheelchair you know he doesn't want to carry his stuff all around he said i left my stuff over there and uh uh and so and it, it's it's gone and he, he said, do you know anyone who has blankets uh, or, or anywhere you can get blankets? And I said, oh, yeah, I can help you out. And so I, I go and I get the wagon back out because the temperature had gone up for a little while and it, and it was dropping. And uh, and I got him a change of clothes because he was soaking wet. He's in a wheelchair. And so uh, I saved his life that night, too. Um, or, well, you never know what would have happened, but... Uh, anyway, so I did that this winter, and, um, hmm. 
and I wanted to share, I want to share that with everybody in my life. I've been going to these prayer services, and the prayer of general confession has meant a lot to me lately, and I think that, um, you know, in addition to, in just the regular practice of getting on my knees at the altar and, and receiving, I'm, I'm downloading, and it reinforces my thinking, it walks me through my, God walks me through my thinking when I do that. And so over and over and over again, I'm going back to refocus. And it's, it's, it's when I was on the street, whenever I've been, since I've been here, you know, I never had, I never really struggled whenever I've uh, been living with other people. I never really struggled uh, with sanity or anything like that. Um, but on the street, I've been going to an altar in a different place almost every day of the week until I was no longer on the street and I've been out here and I'm thinking about what this is now. And that's something that I am religious about is couch surfing because of the exchange, because of all the thoughts. Uh, that we need to have. I'm going to read to you a few pages from the daily morning prayer section at the beginning of the Book of Common Prayer. Philippians, so just, this is for you. Philippians 1, 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms 122 I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Psalms 19.14 Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in, our, in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Every time the, the Anglican church has a service, they confess. So they say, uh, Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts. Uh, let me think about this. That we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in His presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at His hands, to declare His most worthy praise, to hear his holy word and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. And then everybody drops to their knees. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, desires not the death of sinners, but that they may turn from their wickedness and live. 
he has empowered and commanded his ministers to pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. For this reason, we beseech him to grant us true repentance, his Holy Spirit, that our present deeds may please him, that the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hmm. All right, and that's all that I want to read from this for uh, for this morning prayer. But um, that that word obey, where I paused, uh, has there there. I had a thought. But it's escaping me now. I think there, there's something else to be said. But the one thing that comes to mind at the moment is the in God's love, He wants us to fit His imprint on the world. He wants us to fit into His imprint on the world. So in that is conformity. Um, and not all conformity is bad, not whenever that's your source and the that's where all your trust is, what you've found, what you've experienced uh, in the world leads you back over and over and over again to to this this knowing he wants you to fit into that imprint. He wants you to be that. He wants you to be him in the world. His God's love is expressed through our actions. It is when we're obedient that we we're, we're doing our best, ultimately. And there's so much to it. Okay, that's all. And um, except for one one closing thing, um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, what? Turkeys. I'm trying to make a good decision with my life. I told you what's at first what's sad to me. So there's a really long sad story. I'm on the third, the third uh, moment of my life that I do a, a video blog. And, um, and I'm hoping that this takes me to a place that is uh, like really a good place where I, I can do my best. But but there's it's just it's really sad to me. I, the videos are not what I'm. I'm not proud of this. I didn't work very hard on that. It was kind of an accidental movie that I made. You see me fall, um, the in inadequacy in community that really shows when that much time passes, when 
and, and you know it's just the world that we're in and uh and so and with the confession the confession prayer that i just read most merciful father we've erred and strayed from our ways like lost sheep we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts offended your holy against your holy laws left undone things which should have been done and done things we should not have done apart from your grace um, spare us restore us and for heaven's sake in that it's is my fault in, in large part of this is my fault so I, I, that what I wanted for my life, what I've been working on, what I've wanted to, what, what, what I've, what I've been trying to do, words, didn't make any sense. I was trying to work with something that didn't exist, trying to create something that didn't exist is very high ideal. <laughs> But I wasn't working on with what what I have, what's given to me. I guess I was really trying to escape the world that is. And so, if I and so and I haven't glorified God with my life, if I'm suffering constantly, if, if you just see me become destroyed, how does that glorify God? And so there's an order of events that must take place if I'm going to, to glorify God with my life. Um, I, I have failed because I was wrong about some things that I thought about the world, going into the world as a young man. And so now I'm 29 and I'm pretty late to... Um, get some kind of foundation underneath me. So in that confession, it is our fault too. Um, see you later.